This is KGW News at Sunrise. Looking live outside from the Wells Fargo Skycam, less than one hour away from one of Portland's most cherished events. The Providence Bridge Pedal is just about here. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday. I'm Evan Watson alongside meteorologist Chris McGinnis. Good morning. Couldn't be a nicer day for it as well. And uh, the middle of August is typically dry anyway, but you know what? We've got plenty of uh, daylight out there as well. Let's go ahead and give you the Live look from the weather wall. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness. That is the glorious shot from our solar vineyard camera in Dayton showing the silhouette of Mount Hood uh, sun up in just a couple of minutes and it is gorgeous out there. Not much in the way of any cloud cover. Rose City Sky Camera backs that up. You can see big pink starting to glow off to the right hand side of your screen as well. 61 degrees last check at PDX and the plan for today looks gorgeous. I've got us in the mid 70s at uh, noon and topping out in the low to mid 80s later today. So fantastic for whatever you've got planned. If you do have plans to be traveling in and around downtown, know this, of course, with the bridge pedal ongoing this morning, the Fremont Bridge westbound 405 southbound is closed until noon and the Ross Island Bridge westbound is closed until 1030. And then as we look at some of the eastbound closures, the biggie, of course, is the Markham Bridge I-5 northbound. Uh, the top deck is closed until 11 a.m. And here's a look at some of the other uh, bridge closures, eastbound closures on the Steel Morrison and Hawthorne. If you want to avoid all of this and you're not interested in bridge pedal, the Burnside and the Broadway Bridge are unimpacted this morning. Evan. Thanks, Chris. New this morning, a head on crash in Cowlitz County has sent seven people to the hospital. This happened along along State Route 503 near Little Kalama River Road. Investigators say it looks like the driver of a car tried to pass another vehicle when it slammed head on into a car going the other way. Police do believe drugs or alcohol played a factor in this one. Ten people in total were in the two cars, a lot of them kids. Again, seven people were taken to area hospitals. We'll keep you updated on their conditions as we learn more. Damage is being evaluated at Rio's ribs after the restaurant caught on fire overnight. Fire crews worked this scene on Northeast Sandy Boulevard in Portland. The owner says she suspects a homeless person set the fire. Right now, she's not sure how much repairs will cost. This is the third time the restaurant restaurant has caught on fire since 2020. That they are never left wondering if they're alone, if anyone will listen to them and if anyone will care. That's the mission and the message of the Family Justice Center of Washington County. Its leaders want to highlight the critical resources they provide to end cycles of abuse. Earlier this week, the body of 27 year old Kaylee Birdzell was found in a landfill. Investigators called her death a domestic violence related murder. Alma McCarty sat down with the executive director of the Family Justice Center. From the opening in 2018 to the beginning of this year, Rachel Schutz tells me they've helped nearly 12,000 people in Washington County access services after abuse or violence. After hearing about Birdzell's tragic murder, she was compelled to reach out to us so more people will know where to turn in moments of need. The case of Kaylee was an absolute tragedy. Our community right now is facing an all time high in domestic violence homicides. It is very emotional for our partners when we see something like that happen. At the Family Justice Center of Washington County, Executive Director Rachel Schutz says the mission of the numerous agencies housed within the center is this to break cycles of abuse and safely connect survivors with life saving services. Since opening their doors in 2018, they've provided this help to thousands. I hate that it's necessary. Um, I don't want anybody to have to come here. Every person here wants to have done enough to close our doors because we are not needed anymore. That's the goal. Yet, Schutz says that's not the current reality. She hopes more people recognize the signs of domestic violence and abuse, explaining abusers often use tactics like fear, intimidation and isolation. It is a long term cycle of power and control to make the victim believe that it is normal. It is um, something that they deserve. Though help is out there, Schutz said it can be extremely difficult, even dangerous to get it, sometimes taking seven to ten tries 
to leave partner violence. The barriers to getting help are very, very high. It can be life-threatening to try to get help. And um, that is the real fear and the real challenge of getting out of these situations and why it takes so many times and why it can look like the person is just going back. When someone feels safe and ready, all it takes is a phone call to the Family Justice Center. Schutz said all questions asked and all information shared is 100 percent confidential. Reaching out to have those conversations is the first step because it doesn't commit you to anything. You can simply ask the questions. Nothing is compelled when you are when you make these phone calls or access these resources. If you or someone you know is in immediate danger, call or text 911. If you're trying to reach the Family Justice Center, the number on your screen, 503-430-8300. Callers can connect to all crisis lines from there 24-7. We'll have more resources and links on KGW.com. A plan by the city of Beaverton to improve road safety got a big boost this week. The city received a $2 million grant from the U.S. Department of Transportation. The money is for the Beaverton Downtown Loop Project. The city's idea is to enhance walking, biking, and driving routes between Old Town and Central Beaverton. City leaders call this a massive project that's going to open up many jobs. Their goal is to support local businesses and improve safety after several accidents in the area. This uh, project is going to be generational changing for our city. Beaverton has done all this work bringing in restaurants and people to our core. And now we're going to invest in the road to make sure that the sidewalks are wide, that it's well lit, that bikers have protected bike lanes so that way their experience is prioritized. The city will likely work on planning for the project for the next two years. The full project could take five to ten years to complete with a total cost of 20 to 30 million dollars. As Portland police struggle with staffing shortages, the city's clean and safe crews are working to help. That includes extended hours for a new safety number you can call. Blair Best caught up with one of the workers in Old Town. She's a helping hand. I've been doing Old Town for like two weeks now. Someone you can turn to. Yeah, I just helped the guy right now looking for the Blanchet house and he, he couldn't read a map. Lena's son used to be homeless. Because I got a bad background, I got a bad past, and I couldn't find work anywhere. Now she works for Portland's clean and safe crews, watching out for the city's most vulnerable. You no, know, I made a mess too, and now I feel like I'm able to help clean up people's camps and stuff. Um, I see them doing a good job, and I, I think they need to stay around see that they help me, then I gotta do the same thing too. But they do more than that. They also provide security for local businesses. The program just launched a new number to reach them and is aiming to work the streets 24 seven. And we're serving as kind of a, a triage uh, for a very understaffed police bureau in, in, a, in a challenging time. If you're in downtown, you can now call them at 503-388-3888 for non-emergency security issues, such as people sleeping in doorways or disrupting businesses. But it's building rapport, treating people with respect and saying, hey, would you mind moving a little bit, a couple of feet away from the doorway so this business owner can get in? Um, of course, if those situations do escalate, we have a partnership with the police bureau. These clean and safe workers, while they're here to help people, they also find themselves at risk. Uh, I got attacked like once. This guy threw a bag of cereal at me and then he got in my face. And she's not alone. One of my coworkers got attacked. He was sitting on taking his break and he got socked five times in the face. When it gets dangerous, they call police and they ask you to do the same. Walk away from the scene and call the dispatch. Every day is going to be difficult. In an emergency, still call 911 for an immediate response and then call clean and safe only after you've confirmed that an officer is on the way. In Old Town, Blair Best, KGW News. Coming up next, we're talking about the differences in hops. You might not know this, but where they're grown can impact your beer drinking experience. We'll show you what researchers from Oregon State University found when studying the hops grown here in the Northwest.